this is a 2002 model 400 ex and you guys saw back in 2016 where we posted a video of the initial uh, restoration of this four-wheeler uh, and we rode it like that for a little while and then just recently uh, noticed it was starting to look a little bit ragged and so redid it again so first thing that we did and I think it's most obvious uh, update is switch from the black plastics and that was the, I think that was the thing back in 2016 uh, when we rhino lined those black plastics uh, that was the number one comment that I got that bad job everything else looks great but the rhino lining on the plastics is no good and so not really in a response to the negative comments as much as just uh, wanting to play with some different colors and see what we thought uh, we updated to the blue plastics I think it looks pretty good. Located on the inside of these shrouds, you'll see these rigid headlights. Uh, these, these lights are designed to go above your garage door or on the side of your vehicle or your trailer to illuminate the ground below, but we thought that they were a great, not flush mounted, but at least uh, low profile light to, to, to try out as headlights on this 400EX. Uh, we've got a shift here on the side of the wind fairings and a quick switch those headlights come on and really do a great job of illuminating the ground below on our rides out in the wilderness. These front shocks are, are uh, Fox Float 3s. They're not the Float Evos, they're the Float 3s. And uh, when we first bought this four-wheeler, the plan was just to keep the stock shocks. Uh, but they are aptly, the stock shocks that come on the 400EX are aptly named pogo sticks. And we noticed after several hours of riding the 400EX that the pogo sticks were getting a little old. Thought we'd update. And uh, the float threes were the most reasonably priced uh, shocks that we could find on the market. We did end up leaving the rear shock stock. If we do update that, if we do upgrade that, we'll probably upgrade the the linkage as well and so not just swap out the uh, the shock but we'll upgrade the linkage and just completely redo the shock and the and the uh, and the linkage assembly on the rear end We took the engine covers off, both the left and the right uh, engine covers off, and we had them Cerakoted in bronze. And uh, both of these engine plugs on the uh, left side, uh, those are from Outlaw Racing. Actually, they cost just a few dollars, and I was surprised by uh, how well built they are. Uh, the top end on the engine is uh, both polished and powder coated. Uh, we're gonna see how that powder coating holds up to heat but we feel pretty confident that the Cerakoting on the engine covers is going to be a pretty solid addition to this build. Uh, we also, when we put the engine covers back on, we added a bolt kit. And uh, something that we did discover on the left side of the engine cover is that there are two bearings. Uh, no, no, no. On the right side of the engine cover. Let's come over here, Alec, and take a look. Something that we did notice on the right side engine cover is that there are two bearings on this clutch arm actuator that when during the seracoding process can be contaminated with debris uh, because uh, before the this cover is seracoded it's bead blasted and so there's a little bit of dust involved in that process and that dust gets into those bearings and can contaminate them and you cannot buy those bearings from Honda uh, it's the bearings are part of the engine cover itself so in this case when those bearings got contaminated uh, we ended up taking the engine cover back and we boiled it uh, to expand the metal around the bearings after we boiled uh, the engine cover uh, we went in and we sprayed out the bearings with brake cleaner and then we heavily greased them and so you can hear when I squeeze the clutch the, the bearings sound clean and solid. Uh, there was a tremendous amount of work involved with that. We were told by a couple of different uh, four-wheeler mechanics 
that we were biting off more than we could chew and we decided after we were after all was said and done that we did in fact bite off more than we could chew but it was well worth it because the engine just looks fantastic in that burnt bronze Cerakote. The wheels on this particular 400EX are from Alba Racing. Uh, we found that all of the Alba Racing components that we've used uh, have been excellently made and uh, we highly recommend uh, all of the components on this rig from Alba Racing. Uh, when we bought the wheels, they were black and red. The beadlocks themselves were red. Just recently we had, uh, when we swapped the plastics out to the blue, from the black to the blue, we had the beadlocks taken and blasted and powder coated in a blue that would match the plastics. And so, i uh, been very pleased after four years of riding on these Alba Racing wheels with how well they've, uh, they've held up to the abuse that we've put on them. This chain is an EK Premium X-Ring chain with a 520 pitch. Cost $182 on Amazon. And uh, haven't got a chance to ride the four-wheeler with that chain on yet, but uh, it does look impressive. That 3D series chain looks fantastic from EK. Uh, keep in mind that if you do buy the chain, that you'll have to have the chain breaker set uh, with a chain riveter. Uh, this is not just a slide and pin series chain, but it, you do have to have uh, rivets and a riveting tool to put this chain in place. This yellow box on the back is from Pelican. It is the 1200 series case. It is watertight and it's mounted to the aluminum uh, battery box that we've mounted on this particular four wheeler. Uh, I don't even know if we've got anything in here right now. No, but typically we have our fuel, or our, not our fuel, but our uh, tool bag uh, inside this box. And so if anything breaks down on the quad while we're on our ride, uh, we've got a small tool bag full of Allen wrenches and ratchets and some pliers and some various things that we might need in the event, in the event of a breakdown. Uh, and we just keep those in this watertight box uh, from Pelican. Again, the yellow Pelican 1200 case that we have mounted directly to the aluminum toolbox or uh, battery box uh, in the back of the four-wheeler. This is an HMF exhaust pipe uh, with a stock header and uh, what we did was we bought the yellow exhaust pipe from HMF and then if you go to HMF's website uh, they have these badges that you can buy and uh, we ended up just atta attaching those onto the exhaust pipe itself uh, the badges were reasonably priced and we think that they just look fantastic but we also put them on the side of the plastics over here you'll see HMF uh, Borich series uh, we used Hoonigan and Pelagic for our graphics kit and just kind of combined the two to create a what we think is just a fantastic looking graphics kit on the front end of the of the plastics as well as a tournament racing sticker from Pelagic Gear. All right, so when we when we painted this frame, I know that a lot of comments uh, from our 2016 video talked about uh, perhaps powder coating the frame, but what we did here was a little bit different. So we used a PPG self-etching epoxy primer. Uh, before we did that, we used aluminum, or uh, no, aircraft paint remover and completely uh, removed all of the factory paint from the frame all the way down to bare steel. Then we used a self-etching uh, double component epoxy from PPG um, and we sprayed that epoxy coating on. We went over the top of that with a CARC uh, double component acrylic paint. It's a military grade uh, waterborne paint that is a two part and so you mix your part A and part B uh, and we left that cart paint on this four-wheeler for about around three years. It held up exceptionally well, but because it's such a flat paint, it picked up a lot of dirt and it was difficult to keep it clean and keep it looking new. And so uh, we ended up going over the top of that cart with a Spectrocron Series 380 from PPG. Uh, that Spectrocron is a two component uh, urethane and uh, this urethane is used to paint heavy equipment such as skid steers and front end loaders. Uh, it has a pencil hardness that's greater than most powder coat systems 
And so there's actually a three coat system of paint that's on this frame, starting with that self etching epoxy primer and then moving on to the military grade uh, double component cart series paint and then the Spectrocron Series 380 over the top of that. And so uh, the finished coat that's on this frame is actually the same uh, material that would be used to, to uh, coat the bucket of a front end loader um, from CAT. So uh, very resilient uh, coating system that's on this frame. Okay, so when we took in the engine side covers to have them Cerakoted, uh, we also took in the uh, fuel cap and so the fuel cap is from Alba Racing and uh, the fella that, that did our Cerakoting suggested that we don't just use burnt bronze on the fuel cap but that we use a battle worn burnt bronze with black on top of that and so I think the effect was pretty fantastic now Alba Racing makes a great uh, gas cap uh, and we were very pleased with the way that the, that the gas cap looked straight from Alba Racing. But as long as we were having some parts Cerakoted, we thought why not just have the gas cap itself Cerakoted as well. So when you get ready to build your 400DX, something to think about is what's your end game? What are your priorities? What are you hoping to achieve out of this build? So what we wanted to do with this particular build um, was we wanted a trail quad. We were not hoping to build a racing bike. Uh, we wanted a perfect quad to go and hit the trails and so that's the reason why we kept the stock length a-arms i've watched several videos of different guys that have built their 400 dx's and it seems like everybody has their own priority and i respect that now we've seen several guys that have got a completely junked out 400 dx and almost ready for the uh, uh for the junk pile but they'll invest $600 in a set of state-of-the-art ARs because the priority with them is not that the quad looks good, it's not that the quad uh, runs good, but it's that the quad be wider and have more stability. And so that's great. If that's what your priority is, then go with that. But what I would recommend before you start building your 400DX, because these builds can get a little out of control expense-wise, and so sit and think for a little bit, what do I want? What's my end game? Uh, where do I want to draw the line on expenses? And how am I going to use this quad? Am I going to use it to race? Am I going to use it on the trails? Uh, do I want it to be wider? Do I just want it to look sexy? Uh, do I want to throw it in the back of my truck and show it off? Um, and so what's going to be my purpose with this quad? And uh, make sure that when you start in with your build that your quad is purpose built and that you're not building something uh, just for your friends to admire, but that you're building something that's specific to you, something that you're gonna enjoy. Now, if you move to the back, you'll see that we did extend the length of the axle. And we did not do this because we wanted uh, added stability for going around cor corners in a race. Uh, we added these tusk, uh, rear hubs which added a, an additional two inches of length to the back end simply because these rear hubs are beefier than the stock hubs and we continued to bend those uh, stock Honda hubs and so uh, when we switched to these uh, to these uh, tusk hubs we no longer were able to bend those in our trail rides but it did extend the length of the rear axle somewhat A few moments later.